Hi, I'm Jim Elliott, author of Vox Amplifiers, The JMI Years. I'd like to welcome you to the Vox Museum. We're here today to talk about the original AC4, which was introduced in December of 1961. These amplifiers had an EF86 in the preamp section and an EL84 in the power section. All this fed a big 8-inch ELAC speaker. AC4s were assembled at 119 Dartford Road. 119 Dartford Road was the final assembly point for all Vox amplifiers up through roughly 1965. Chassis would come from a variety of manufacturers as would cabinets from a variety of cabinet makers. All this would be put together at Dartford Road and the last thing that would happen is they would get their Vox logo. In mid-1962, the AC4 shed its AC2 sized cabinet going instead to a larger, more appropriate size. This new cabinet remained standard until the end of production in 1965. In early 1960, Vox brought out a little practice amplifier called the AC6. By the end of the year, this had become the AC2. By the middle of the following year, the AC2 magically became the AC4 with no modifications other than the name change. The original AC4, as with most entry-level amplifiers of the time, was a one-trick pony. It had a volume knob, a tone knob, and that was it. Perhaps the most significant use of an AC4 was by Paul McCartney in August of 1965. While backstage at Minneapolis, he used an AC4 as a practice amplifier to help tune up his Hofner bass. Not as well known as its big brother, the AC30, the AC4 sold a respectable 3,000 units during its production run. Perhaps the most significant changes to the AC4 over its evolution was in its cabinetry. When it began as the AC6, it was in a TV front cabinet. Later, when it switched to the AC2, the cabinet was changed to the new split front design. Even later, when the, after it had changed to the AC4, the cabinet itself got bigger. Yeah. 